Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. Okay, let's talk about Tesla. All year I've been on X expressing all my concerns with the company. I've read absolutely every single reply and replied to many. I also blocked every single person who was the slightest bit rude. I'm asking serious questions and if you don't have an answer, there's no point in insulting someone to make yourself feel more confident about your own bias. It doesn't change anything. Luckily, there are many people, and probably you listening now, who did offer some constructive feedback. Personally, I think the fanboy cult side of Tesla runs too strong. It's become absolute collectivism. If you don't understand collectivism, it's when an individual expresses an opinion in contrary to a mass narrative and thinking. For example, when we had vaccines and people spoke out about those, even if they were credible doctors or scientists, they were silenced and shamed. Ironically, the Tesla cult also allegedly stands for freedom of speech. Seriously, the irony and hypocrisy is enough to make your head spin. Some of them even go around saying, no one is smarter than Elon, and if you ever think you know better than Elon, then you suffer from something called smarter than Elon syndrome or something. I'm sorry, Elon is very smart, but he doesn't know more than everyone in the Tesla investing community put together. There are many of us with various backgrounds and industries who have decades of experience in these, and some very intelligent people, and a lot of them even focus on Tesla more than Elon does these days. To think of Elon as some sort of god who can never be wrong is just crazy. Elon has a string of mistakes, he's not perfect. Nor is there nothing wrong with wanting to have an opinion on how our company is run. We own this company too, we can have our say. I'm not a fan of collectivism at all. And perhaps as a result, I may overcompensate on negativity for Tesla to balance out the fanboys and offer more perspective than just Tesla will go to the moon. They're much more experienced, smarter investors than us who believe it or not, don't think Tesla will go to the moon or else they'd invest too. I'm not trying to be a Tesla bear or Tesla Q. I just try to balance out the insanity and as a result, often end up playing devil's advocate Anything with these guys is good news. Nothing can go wrong. I saw a tweet the other day with one of them celebrating the fact their entire net worth was down 85% as they're all in Tesla so far, as if it was a badge of honor. It's a cult. And perhaps that investment strategy has done wonders in the past for many Tesla investors, but it doesn't mean it will continue. So then I try and balance out the insanity. I get abused for it by many, but a lot of you really do appreciate it. I've said many times before, I'm not here for confirmation bias. I'm just looking at facts and data objectively. I present them and read all the feedback and analyze where I may be right or wrong. At times, I may get a little frustrated and sound somewhat emotional. I don't mean to be, but it can be frustrating at times. But I've never been rude or abusive to anyone, although perhaps a little sarcasm at times for a bit of levity. Equally, I've never used this channel or presence to try and generate clout. I've always done the same thing, just enjoyed talking about and analyzing a very exciting company and sharing and discussing said thoughts with my loyal listeners. I didn't do it for money either. I didn't do it to try and pump Tesla stock, sell any courses, merchandise, and declined every sponsorship I got offered. I just did it for fun. And because I had a fortune invested and wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything and it wasn't too good to be true. Anyway, that's enough. Now I'll talk about my current view of Tesla and perhaps whether or not it is too good to be true. Now, I love social sciences, obviously an avid economics fan, but also history, philosophy, a bit of politics. But lately last year, I've been getting more into psychology. Now, in the past, I have been focusing on the economics of Tesla and supply and demand is obviously a major factor when it comes to this company. Can Tesla supply enough EVs? And is there enough demand for the EVs? These were how the fundamentals went. My conclusion early on was there was only enough supply if Tesla solved the dry battery electrode process with the 4680s. And I don't think anyone at all in the community will deny that I have been consistent with this throughout the entire time. And I called it earlier than everyone that it looked like it was not succeeding. And here we are, still at a run rate of around 5% from the 2022 target. That is a failure, the only way to describe it. And sure, you can use these numbers and plot them on a chart and make them look exponential if you like, but 
exponentials are not some sort of magic. Even if something is exponential, it still depends on how regularly it doubles and what the starting number was for it to eventuate into something large. Currently, we have a very small number and the numbers I'm looking at can easily be plotted on a different chart as linear anyway. Why? Because we aren't improving line speed, because we haven't solved dry battery electrodes. Tesla are just adding more 4680 lines with this low run rate. But remember, the fanboys can make things look however they want for confirmation bias. And this is some of their jobs, to use data and manipulate it to make it look good, to please all their followers and get a nice pat on the back, and maybe an emoji from Elon. I'm not saying fanboys are stupid. In fact, quite the opposite. The smarter you are, the better you are at creating your own confirmation bias. Hence why psychology is such an important factor here. Although I think there are some big players in the community who really do just deliver you confirmation bias and you go to them like a drug. It releases dopamine for you. They may just make reaction videos of anyone doubting Tesla saying, look how stupid this guy is, or someone saying something positive about Tesla, then they might call them a genius. I think quite a few of them actually sold out of Tesla too, or at least reduced their position and don't fully believe what they say anymore and do it just for the money. Now don't get me wrong here, as the bears are also complicit with the exact same thing. Anything that Tesla does is always negative to them, which is why I revert back to my studies of psychology. I actually read 80 books last year. That was a record for me. And when I say read, I'm including Audible. And when I say 80, I'm also counting the same book as three, if I read it three times. Yes, that's right. If I listen to a book written by someone more educated on a particular topic, that they have been studying for decades, and if it is good, I'll often start it again immediately after it finishes, so I can learn the book rather than just listen to it. So I think when it comes to the stock price, psychology is more important than economics or finance for Tesla. But like I said, I've been consistent about how I see this company. Whereas the fanboys have gone from EVs to FSD to energy to dojo to robots to try and find some hope somewhere of how these financials might one day change to not only justify today's stock price, but to actually make it increase 10 to 20 fold. You know, like Elon said. Oh yeah, the whole Elon said rhetoric. This was the biggest trap I fell in as an investor and woke up from it at the worst time. Don't count on anything that Elon says because almost everything he ever promises is either delayed for years or we're still waiting years. He's great at distracting us with some new shiny thing that will take Tesla to the next level. Don't look behind here where all the failures are that I said would make billions. No, look at this new shiny thing that's going to make trillions. Remember when solar used to be a thing? Elon told us he had to concentrate on the car business though. Yeah, solar, that isn't happening. It's not the future of energy. Nuclear is the most logical way moving forwards, but Tesla doesn't own nuclear plants. And before any of you comment, well, that's where I'm wrong because the Model Y actually launched a few months earlier than they said. Yeah, sure, it did. But what about everything else? Remember the Roadster was revealed eight years ago now and people put down substantial deposits. I doubt that will happen. Oh, and the Semi eight years ago. Sure, Tesla made enough prototypes to sell a few and get them on the roads. And now they appear to be clearing the ground for a new factory, but we know how Tesla's last two factories went as well, still only at one third capacity. Why? Same reason for all of them, 4680s. And Elon has been talking about robotaxis and FSD being sold since 2016, but the fanboys are partying now because FSD 12 is launching. Look, my opinion is it's not close to being solved until we see about 10,000 consecutive trips where it wouldn't have crashed and you feel safe enough to put your child in it. But at the same time, I'm happy to admit that I've never experienced FSD beta, and some of the videos we see are still amazing. I'm not saying it's not incredible. I just think potentially that there's still a really long way ahead until we're talking about robotaxi level. I remember a lot of those videos are around San Francisco where Tesla has a ton of data. Outside of that catchment area, a lot of people are saying, they still haven't ever experienced one trip without an intervention. I remember Elon said that the car would just learn and be able to be dropped off anywhere in the world and it would just know how to drive. Clearly this is not the case. 
as it works so much better where it has the data. It's essentially geofenced, except it doesn't work as well as the actual geofenced FSDs with LiDAR. This is just how I see it, and I've expressed these concerns, and no one has given me any rebuttals. It's just numbers I'm using. But FSD appears to be the biggest hope for the stock to go up so much, because everyone will have to have a Tesla if FSD is solved, or every legacy auto will have to license it, because no one in the world would ever want to drive a car again themselves. At least this is the theory. I thought everyone would want a Tesla too. The cars are sensational. There's no denying that Elon made a fantastic car. Why they're not selling more, I really don't know. I don't know why people buy Toyotas, BMWs, etc. for around the same cost of ownership. I truly don't understand. But you have to follow the data. And sure, Tesla sales are increasing. And Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. But the price for the entry model is 30% less now too. And remember, Tesla is valued as much as all the other car companies put together. So you would expect some good sales. Although I thought the tax credit would have had more impact as well. These felt like obvious axioms to me and many of us, but the data is pointing elsewhere. In fact, the Model Y has never had as much inventory as it does now, which does feel like a time bomb for another inevitable price cut of models to come. And I bet the Juniper Model Y update is going to be sensational too. It will be a fantastic car. I might even buy one. And I might buy the new Model 3 Performance now rumoured to have Trimotor. The products are amazing. And then we talk to people about them and discover how little they even know about a Tesla. And it blows our minds why Tesla are not advertising. And I talk to people and hardly any of them even know what the Cybertruck is. Which may not be as big a seller as we hoped. It sounds like we're already past 10% of the reservation holders of the alleged 2 million back orders, yet perhaps only about 1,000 have been delivered, if that. Implying they're only going to be about 20,000 Cybertrucks sold, well, at this current price for the Foundation series, of course, and no one who put down this reservation did it for a car that costs around $100,000. It's just a rich man's toy at this stage. Yes, very impressive engineering on so many levels, and the price will obviously come down. On the other hand, who knows what demand might be like when the general public start to see the car drive around, and perhaps organic demand will grow as a result. Tesla is the best-selling car in all its other segments. Why not pickup trucks too? But I think the 2 million back order is realistically more like 200,000 without a $40,000 version and the missing amount of range we were promised because 4680s are not close to energy as dense as we were told. Once again, like I've always said, it's 4680s and value Tesla more as a car company where almost all the profits are derived. It's a car company and a FOMO company and you don't want to miss out on the potential of robot labor and self-driving cars. Sure, there's some reasonable profits coming in through energy now, but that was massive letdown as who. No ramping from Q1 to Q4 all of last year. Disappointing. Tesla don't make their own sales. CATL and BYD can undercut Tesla with their energy storage. Tesla doesn't have any competitive advantage. In fact, CATL and BYD do over Tesla, if anything. Tesla can't bring out any more cars because they don't have enough cells. Okay, Panasonic and some of the others are gonna help, but Tesla need high energy dense cells and they're very slow and capital intensive to make. And if we ever want to see 50% growth from where we are today, well, that's enough cells for a million more cars we need now. To put it another way, Giga Nevada makes enough for about half a million Model Ys, and that took three years to build. But we have LFP and Gen 3, and that will take the car business to the next level for us. Then why postpone Mexico? If Gen 3 is going to be that successful and that popular, then why not go all in? Sorry, no, not all in. Why not spend 3% of the massive cash reserve and build that factory already? It can be a great export hub for the rest of the world too. But no, we're building a pilot line in Texas first, where the best engineers are, except the best manufacturing engineers are all in China. Remember, Elon said it was about manufacturing. The actions are not matching up to the words. And then I'm not even convinced that the compact will be that big a seller. Most auto OEMs bestsellers are not compacts. BYD's bestseller is not their compact, and their compact starts at only $13,000. And I especially don't think it will be the best seller in the US. I'm sure there is a market for it in China and Europe, 
but perhaps globally, 500,000, maybe a million. I want to buy more shares in Tesla, I really do, but I can't find the magic. I don't trust Elon at all anymore, and the 4680s are just such a negligible contribution with no signs of anything amazing, aside from adding more lines. There are gonna be price cuts coming, and Q1 is gonna be the first quarter to feel the cogs from the Cybertruck, which is likely going to result in the worst EPS for some time, there are so many reasons for the stock to get hammered this year, it just feels a bit dangerous to enter the waters too deep. I want to be positive and excited and imagine a world that is changing for the better, but I don't want to be holding tons of stock just waiting and waiting. This community will be able to spot the breakthroughs that really matter much earlier than Wall Street, and if there is a path, then I think there'll be plenty of time to get more back in. However, like I said, this stock is more about psychology. And sometimes robots and FSD feel more believable than others. And sometimes these areas bubble, AI and robots, for example. And the stock could even run up to all time highs this year. And it sucks to miss out. And rates could drop, you never know. Which is why it's such a painful stock. It's painful to miss out, but it's painful to also have it drop so much too. You're damned if you do, and damned if you don't. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.